Mm -hmm. All right, folks, it's 7 p.m. We're calling this meeting of the DRB to order. Um, it is July 16th, 2018. Oh, our, sorry, I have to do this one more time. We're going to call the July 16th, 2018 meeting of the DRB to order. I'm sorry, I just have to make sure that we're keeping a recording of this meeting. Um, I see some veterans out there in the crowd tonight, but I have to do the same opening remarks every time. This is to explain the procedural uh, rules that we follow and essentially how things work in this, these meetings. <clears throat> At the DRB, we hear applications for land development in the town of Brattleboro and appeals of zoning administrator decisions. Procedurally, the Development Review Board operates on the record. Broadly, this means we take a clear record of testimony from the applicant and any interested parties and then issue a written decision with our findings. Applicants and members of the public should be aware that as we are on the record, this is your opportunity to comment on and provide evidence relating to an application. In the event our decision is appealed to the Environmental Court, the Court will not <coughs> take or consider new additional testimony at its hearing. It will look at the evidence from our hearing, the regulations or applicable law, and determine if the evidence supports the findings and decisions of this Board. Only interested persons that participate in this proceeding may appeal a decision made by this board. So I strongly encourage all of you to speak up at the hearing. Uh, because we're on the record, if you think there's even the slightest chance you're going to speak, I'm going to ask to swear you in. So um, you remember this drill? Well, I'll wait until he signs it. Can, I, can you, we do the raise your right hand? Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so everybody who thinks you may speak, raise your right hand. Do you hereby swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give in the cause under consideration will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. Okay, sorry about that. Um, applicants require a majority vote of the full board to succeed. That means four votes out of the seven people up here. If we don't have a full board present to hear your application, then we'll consider a request to continue your application to the next public meeting. We may still not have a full board if somebody here has any conflict of interest with any of the applicants. And so, even though this sounds a little strange, uh, if it turns out we don't have all seven votes for your application, you may ask for continuance, you may ask for essentially a weather report, um, or you can ask us to just move forward and you would then need four votes out of six, uh, or less if we have fewer people because of conflicts. Um, after taking testimony, the board will close the public hearing and we may vote on your application. The board will issue a written decision within 45 days of the close of the hearing. While we may vote on an application, it's the written decision that controls the timeline for an appeal. It should be noted that the town of Brattleboro is a party with an interest in land development applications. The town does not have a special status before this board. Documents provided to the board by the town planning department, town attorney, or any other town department or representative will be considered in exactly the same way as information from the applicant or any other interested parties. The first order of business is to review and approve the minutes from our meeting on July, I'm sorry, June 18th, 2018. Okay, a motion? Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Passes 7 0. Uh, Mr. Bannon, have we been properly warned tonight? Yes, we have. Great. Um, any disclosures of conflicts of interest or ex parte communications? Well, I suppose I have to disclose that I just sent Mr. Stevens an email on an unrelated matter. Um, a couple of hours ago, not realizing that he would be here tonight. Uh, mm -hmm. I expect it to just be Mr. I always say this the wrong way. Is it Mr. Paji? Yeah. Okay. <sighs> only two years to figure that one out. <laughs> um, I expect it to only be Mr. Paji, so uh, I probably would have waited a day, but it was uh, completely unrelated to this application or even the business that Mr. Stevens operates. Uh, so I don't view that as a conflict of interest. Uh, okay. I'll disclose. I, I know the person who, uh, I guess, is the executive director of Insight Photography Project, sort of socially. And I was actually just there <coughs> looking at camera equipment and actually bought something from them. So did I they give you a discount in exchange? I didn't your even vote? I didn't even know no, they didn't. And That's I didn't good. even know this was upcoming because I didn't read the paperwork until after I had purchased said piece of camera equipment. So okay. I just wanted to disclose that that I was actually just there and they get donated a ton of equipment and some they can use and some they can't. So 
I guess I have to disclose that I got to know Omega's sheep very well this weekend. I'm trying to round them up up at Winston Prouty, so. <laughs> They're back. <laughs> okay, so um, I don't view any of that as a conflict of interest. However, if you are here to comment on an application and you are concerned by any of the things that were just disclosed, you need to raise that issue on the record. Um, the first application that we're going to hear tonight is for uh, Delta Industries LLC. That was continued from our last meeting when the application was only partially warned uh, due to an error on our part. Um, is it Mr. Gabriel that's coming up? or He's on um, traveling. Do you want to wait for him? No. Okay. Well, why don't you come up and we'll just have a little check-in. I'm going to have Brian explain the best way to muddle through the procedural problem because believe it or not this is the first time that this has happened all span. Um, and I usually defer to Brian when brains are required. So okay. um, so you proposed a motion with certain conditions at the last meeting and that's reflected in the minutes. Um, you proposed that you would do that if there was no public comment and modify it as as needed if there was public comment. So there was enough testimony in evidence at the last hearing, so additional testimony is not required to make findings and make a decision, but public participation is required. Okay, so I'm just gonna um, once more read the motion for the benefit of anyone who wasn't here. Um, and. and can you, in one paragraph or less, was everybody here for the Delta application last time? I viewed the video. Okay, can you, you review the video? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you as well? So everybody knows what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, so w the motion that was made by uh, Ms. Turnus, seconded by Mr. Murchison, was to approve the site plan uh, with the following conditions, that each dwelling unit shall have its own water meter, the street will be posted no parking, the roadway will have a 14-foot travel lane with a 6-foot hard shoulder. EV charges, excuse me, EV chargers will be placed in each parking area. A lighting plan shall be submitted for administrative approval. A radio transmitted signal fire alarm box connected to the municipal system will be installed on the property at a location to be approved by the fire department. And the permittee needs to contact Joe Newton at the fire alarm division. Um, I just want to check in with the applicant. Uh, does that comport? That with sounds it? consistent. Right. Okay. You don't have any objections to that? No, yes. Okay. We don't usually split meetings. I'm just trying to be careful here. Um, does anybody on the board have any further questions or comments about the motion? I'm, I'm considering this in the discussion phase still. I don't know. Are there any? I, I would. Just, I just raise, and this is not to be a stickler. I just. I have some doubts that the no parking will actually work. I brought up the issue of. That the buildings don't have parking specifically for them they have a parking area and I feel like my speculation on human nature is people may go to the grocery store and go oh well I'll just park in front unload the groceries and then I'll oh guess what I had dinner yeah, yeah, yeah. so I just that was my only real concern because uh, the project seemed to be very, and I think the board, we unanimous, almost unanimously agreed that it was probably a good thing at all. And I just bring that up because that was the only concern that sort of lingered with me. We have identified each each residence will have its own parking space, yeah. and there will be a common space. So. Mm -hmm. the, the, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to be a stickler. We can get the. Uh, oh. uh, the Tripod thing. Oh, I just want you to put it where he can pick yep. it up on the camera so that if somebody's watching. Oh, is there one over there? Yeah, I saw one. Mr. Steve is already building goodwill here. <laughs> you know, let him do it. That way we can have his spot. His is better than ours anyway. So. Please. I, mean, I think just about anyone would be better than ours. But it's like, it's like I just assume people will park in front of their houses. And that, that was my concern, I guess. Um, just while you're about to explain this, is any member of the public here to speak to this application? Okay. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, uh, we have uh, identified each 
you know, each resident will have his own driveway for adequate for, uh, you know, some limited parking. Mm -hmm. And that'll be this common area here. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and yes, people may park beside the road, but there's lots of other places. <laughs> So, so the design currently is that if a person could, if they had a vehicle, bring it and park it right next to their house and be off the roadway. Correct. Okay. I guess I wasn't clear on that, so I think my concerns are... Until we develop a process to chop those no-parked vehicles up and turn them into lenses, I think we're probably out of luck. Lenses, really? Well, yes. Oh, yeah, okay. there's, a, there's a man in this oh. county who can do it. He's sitting at that table. But, um, okay, are there, are there any further issues that people want to discuss regarding to this application? Okay, so the vote is seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Thank you for Great. coming back. Again, sorry about last month. Uh, well, good luck with the project. Thank you. Yeah. I look forward to seeing some new houses. <laughs> Okay, the next application is 2018-95, Miss um, Murphy Cower and uh, Mr. Singh. And if I remember, I actually pronounced your name correctly, instinctually, is that right? This time, yeah. This time, yeah. That's why we came back. <laughs> right, yeah. <it's> <laughs> I wanted to get that satisfaction. Okay. So, um, I, it, let me just take a quick poll before you start. Was everybody here for their, uh, was it three or four months ago application? I was. I was also. Anybody who wasn't? I don't know. I might have watched it on television. If I didn't, if I wasn't here, I watched it. Okay. Can you give you kind of, of it? Six of us remember this, so can you give us a, a one or two paragraph summary of the original project, which we approved, uh, just to provide some context here for the person who, who wasn't there for that one, and then go into the change. Okay. Um, so last time, which was about three months ago, we came in and we just moved to Quails Hill Road in West Brattleboro, um, and we're hoping to open a five-bedroom bed and breakfast that's focused on attracting guests who would access yoga and meditation through our, we're calling it like a small-scale retreat center. Um, and our change, you might notice that there's not much new lingo actually in the application because last time it was actually posted as an inn, not a bed and breakfast. Um, and I believe at the meeting you said, oh, do you want to, did you want to become an inn or what did you want to do? And we were in the midst of doing Act 250 processing and we weren't really sure if we said yes, what that would affect. Mm -hmm. And we realized it doesn't actually affect anything on the Act 250. Um, so then we were kind of kicking ourselves um, because some of our programming will be focused on Indian um, or Ayurvedic health science. Um, which does involve some cooking, and there would like we we'd like to have people also from the community could join in that, and um, may then be eating our food and whatnot. Um, so I think that does fall under classification of an inn. So then we we're like, okay, well, let's contact Brian again. <laughs> so now we're back. Okay. Um, the the. Traffic would not change significantly, but it would change slightly. Is that fair? Or, or is this really the same project you originally planned, except the car might be there overnight? Um, it's the same project we originally planned. I don't think any new cars would actually be there overnight because we were applying the same exact number of bedrooms, so we don't have any more space for people to stay overnight. Oh, okay. It's mainly about also allowing us to um, people from the community to access food. Okay, and no major changes to the the uh, footprint or the, the screening or anything else as far as the neighbors are concerned. This is not going to be any different, correct? So are you, are you going to offer classes for people who aren't staying there or? Yes. Yes. So you could sign up for a class and then stay for lunch or yep. dinner or whatever. But you only have five bedrooms for over. Mm -hmm. Are you putting a commercial kitchen in, or? 
So we're working with the Department of Health to make sure the regulations are um, all set for the bed and breakfast are in, which ends up being about the same regulations for what we would be doing as far as classes are concerned. So which is like how, many meals, how many meals do you think you would be doing it, like a dinner or something like that? Um, I don't suppose. Yeah, it's class-based, so it would be more like a lunch where people would be learning about Ayurveda or like cooking for their body types in the Indian system and then eating. But I, I would think maybe it would be 12 people who maybe would come to that. Can you have 11 parking spaces plus the garage? Could I ask a question of our zoning administrator? Yes. That's Ryan, so I feel like what's motivating them to come back is under our section 304 bed and breakfast, 304 capital A, 1D, meals must not be provided to the general public. So presumably that's the motivation to change the designation of bed and breakfast. And then I just had a, a couple questions then Brian it says one of the requirements for an inn the inn must have a resident manager so my assumption is one of you would take on that and then there's this interesting F guest parking must not be located between the building and the street how would you interpret that section you draw a line through the front facade of the house and it has to be behind that line do they does their current setup conform to that so our guest parking is on the side of our house. Okay. I just thought I'd... You have, a, you have a bit of a winding driveway, too, as I recall, right? Am I wrong about that? Mm. A little bit, not so much. About how long is it? Half a month. No, not half no, sorry, sorry, the driveway. I'm sorry, I thought about the, the whole quail syndrome. No, the driveway yeah. is basically. I was like, what? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like our driveway I'm might be from here to, <laughs> to Brian, and then the parking is right there. Okay. So. All right. All the uh, people who are going to be attending, this is all by appointment, is that correct? Yeah. So, right. I mean, you're not going to just show up and say, oh, there's an inn, I'm going to stay there. So it's going to be all class based. Oh, sorry, yeah. apartment based. Yeah. Okay. Can you flag this for our joint meeting as something that could conceivably cause absurd results in the rural area? Yes. What would cause absurd results? This is inside baseball. Um, <laughs> If they had like a parking lot that didn't happen to be on the side of their house, yeah. this is not the place to apply that condition. That's meant for town, I you know, see. buildings that are on the main drag. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's so that you wouldn't have that old style right. building where you have the parking lot and then the supermarket. Yeah, it's, it's not relevant to them. It's, it's not relevant to you. I'm making, I'm, I'm, I'm making a mental note here because we meet with the people that, um, that, that change this and tinker with it every so often and once in a while something will come up and it occurs to me that if your lot had been you know unfortunately in the wrong place you would have made this application problematic when you really shouldn't have in that zone where it's very rural i mean that's just my thought this is mm -hmm. my yeah, that's why i saw it it just didn't i don't didn't understand it but now i can visualize it you're right well, you're, and your lot is Green from the road anyway, so mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. Yeah. Right. And that's exactly what I mean. Yeah. Any other questions from members of the board? Um, are there any people from the public who came to speak about this application? Nobody from the public. Um, says um, the board may approve accessory uses to an inn that are open to the general public as restaurants, event venues, or spas as a condition of use. Is that what we're doing? Or are we just... Um, no. So this still doesn't solve their, their, their question about being able to serve food to the public. No, I think they can serve food, but I don't think this is... Uh, it doesn't give them the ability to use it as a restaurant, which is a separate and distinct use. Am I right about that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah I see the big distinction in, in this section is that bed and breakfast explicitly says meals may not be provided to the general public. 
actually which they're having the general public come in for yoga stuff and staying for dinner and lunch or whatever isn't that to the general public yes and that's why they want to be in not a bed and breakfast right okay i think i think you may have said that backwards yeah um during the initial explanation but no, stop there. no big deal Sorry. it's clear in the application so they don't want to be bread and breakfast they do want to be right. there. I don't know why we're so strict about bed and breakfasts not offering meals. I'm not right. sure what evil that seeks to solve, but um, okay. So I think you can't um, drive by and just stay and say I want to stay there or I want to have lunch. They said by appointment the only. They said yeah, by yeah. by invitation or so by reservation. To be awesome. very technical about it, if you drive by, you pick up your phone and you made a reservation, <laughs> and if there's a space over there, then technically... Actually, yeah. that in too. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Can we get a motion to approve application 2018-95? Second. Any further discussion? Um, did you guys have any questions before we vote? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion passed. Seven up. We didn't even ask about him. We hope to see you all someday there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see you in three months. It's pretty <laughs> cut. Oh, it's pretty cut. Okay, the next application is uh, Insight Photography Project 2018 103. Is there a lot of signs? I don't have a picture of the picture. The picture was, I didn't realize the picture was a sign at first. Took me a second. Are you Ms. Todd? I am. Okay, can you just introduce yourself to the viewing audience at home? I'm Eileen Todd. I'm uh, the president of the uh, board of the Insight Photography Project. And can you tell us a little bit about this project? Please? Sure. Um, Insight Photography Project has purchased uh, the condominium at 183 Main Street that's currently occupied, uh, owned used by Mocha Joe's Roasting Company. Uh, we closed on that property in April, and uh, Mocha Joe's is currently uh, renting the space from us while they transition to their new home. Um, start, our plan is to start in September to uh, do <coughs> renovations to the inside of the uh, space make it appropriate for the uh, programs that um, Insight Photography runs. Um, the, um, the application to the board is um, actually twofold. Um, one is regarding um, a sign. Um, if you're familiar with the space, um, there's um, an alleyway on the south side of that building. And um, our plan is for that to become the um, accessible access to the uh, street level portion of the uh, condo. Um, so that um, we, need, we need to have that um, um, handicapped access because the other entrance to the, um, to the space requires uh, going up steps and there's a deck outside. And um, we're anxious for people to be able to see the sign, which would be down at, uh, toward the end of the, um, of the alleyway. Um, and, you know, for things like um, uh, gallery walk and, you know, other times when the public would be uh, coming, uh, that would, uh, would also be important for them to um, have a, um, access um, uh, at the street level. So the, uh, the proposal is to um, hang this uh, blade sign, which um, would be, um, I guess uh, it's 14 feet by 2 feet, and um, that there would be um, uh, lighting in the area as well, so that people could actually see it at night as well as during the day. Uh, the second, should I stop there or do you want me to? No, go ahead. Go ahead? Okay. Uh, the second part just has to do with the use of the, of the property, 
which is currently, as we understand it, um, um, light industrial, which reflects uh, the Mocha Joe's uh, business, and um, as an uh, after-school educational program, we would uh, need to have a different designation. Brian, why do they have to come to us for change of use here? Uh, I could have done that administratively as an oversight plan. Oh, okay. It's only the sign doesn't have any specific okay. standards. So. Okay. And there's no sign that this is replacing? No. Or a skeleton that used to house a sign or anything like that? No, there's nothing there. Okay. I'm uh, tremendously familiar with this alleyway because I worked at a now defunct business save the corporations from themselves. Um, so that alleyway currently I know is used um, uh, by walkers to enter the Paramount building. Am mm. I correct there? Yeah, the Paramount building where uh, the Paramount Theater used to be uh, has a Penelope War. Is that the alleyway we're talking about? Yes. Um, where the hot dog guy is. And the hot dog guy, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's a very useful alleyway because mostly offices of uh, the Paramount Building use that entrance. Mm -hmm. The odd thing about the Paramount Building is if you enter the office space from the street level, you actually skip I think the second floor and you skip the first floor. Um, it's pretty safe, pretty safe alleyway. It's a very safe alleyway. Um, Mocha Joe's, of course, has dealt for years with bringing in their beans that alleyway, which is part of the reason they are so excited to <laughs> go to Flat Street. Um, so this this sits directly behind the, the whole Candle in the Night building. I mean, the, it's the same building. It is, yeah. but it it's the back section yeah. uh, that overlooks the river. Yeah. Oh. It used to be a restaurant. Years ago. Years ago. Yeah. yeah. And then I, I guess I just ask, I don't know if it's our purview as a board, but um, I certainly know, let's say you're at Penelope Wars. Um, again, I don't know if there would be any desire in the future that if, uh, if uh, what's his name, the fellow who owns, or people who own Candle Night allow you to put a, a sign at the end of that alleyway. I can't remember if the Paramount Building on their side might have signs pointing down the alleyway. Well, are you familiar with the alleyway? Yeah. yeah. I remember yeah, the we, are familiar. we don't know what end of the alleyway the sign's going to be. Uh, oh, it's it's at the far end. Far end. Because yeah. what's beyond there is you have to put it. There's a fence I'm there. I'm familiar like, with it. But I'm saying, it's oh. a, is it going to be right next to the, the building where Candle and Night is, or it's going to be down where the office doors are where you go into the Claremont building? It's going to be further it's down. Further down. down. Next page. If you look at the drawing. It's, it's essentially the end of the alley. Exactly. Okay. If, yeah. if, if you are familiar with the alley, um, at the very end right now, there are, um, well, I guess it's just one large uh, propane tank. Right. And our plan would fence that off. Mm -hmm. And um, and right now, there, there are two kind of uh, utility doors, I guess that's what you call them. Um, the first one would stay exactly where it is. Um, the other one would be moved up slightly um, as part of the uh, renovations. And it's at that point, which I think, it, uh, what did they tell me, is about 140 some feet back from Main Street, that that would become the entry and the sign would be in front of that. Well, it pains me to say this because when I was on the Planning Commission, I was firmly against the idea that signs should be judged by their dimensions. And I was one of the few people who was sad because the lamp light and motel sign was taken down, and I'm probably one of the so few people who would be sad when a lot of the sign gets taken down from the dry cleaner. I like big, weird signs, and I think they enrich our town, like the Latches Theater sign, for example, uh, which has like its own zoning rule that applies to it and no other building. Um, but absent a few situations like that, 
I lost my argument, as I want to do, and the uh, ordinance we currently have in effect limits sign size in square feet. And we're not empowered to we're not empowered to essentially grant you a variance. And you are at three and a half times the square feet that are allowable there. Um, if there the reason I was asking you about prior signage is if this somehow took the place of something, you can reduce the nonconformity of a prior sign and end up above what the statute, what the ordinance requires if you're reducing the non-compliance of the old sign. I don't know if there's something there that might allow you to take advantage of that. Um, but I don't believe that there's, I, I think we would essentially have to not follow the law in order to grant you the permit for your sign. Am I correct that there can't be a variance? Um, or, well, I don't think you can do a variance, but when I was looking at it, there, there are a series of illustrations of different sign types, including projecting signs, awning signs, and blade signs. Some of those have specific standards, like projecting signs can only be eight square feet. And they have to be a certain height off the ground. There aren't any particular standards that apply to blade signs, but it might be the board thinks that's a type of projecting sign and those standards should apply. I don't think it's a projecting sign. But you're telling me that there's no fixed number in that district? But that there's no sign. specific standard at all for, for that type of blade sign. Mm. But it is something that's illustrated in the code and it's not specifically prohibited. You, what, how, how do you identify this as a hanging or projecting sign? I think there's, if you look at the illustrations, there's yeah. projecting signs and at the end of it. It's just amongst those, but it's it the same. I hate to say it, but I think James, when he, he says the sign must not exceed eight square feet in area, is that the, what you're meaning? Well, um, I mean, I think that the problem here is that it needs to be one of the kinds of signs because the ordinance says these are the sign types that are allowed. Can, can I show this yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. I, don't, I need to get overly technical here. Um, Thank you. Yeah. If you flip it over and read the other side, it has the type, not the, the other one. Just turn the book. Oh, yeah, it's upside down. But didn't flip Brian it, just yeah. say that the blade sign doesn't come under the ordinance? There's no definition for yeah. blade sign. There's no, no specific standard. Is it a projecting or hanging sign? Well, it's a blade sign. Yeah. I mean, I think the problem is if you look in Figure three dash two five. What is it? What what uh, figure? On, on page three dash fifty six. Because we wouldn't want to have regular page numbers, right? Um, there's a figure and it says these are the sign types allowed: wall sign, projecting or hanging sign, directory sign, sign for upper floor uses, yada yada yada. Right on down the line. It is, it is interesting, there's a... And so I don't think that, I don't think that blade signs are anything other than an example of three different types of hanging and projecting signs, which are the second category of sign types allowed. What is the, what is a wall sign? Oh, I see. That's it's, how it's, I see. Right? It's really up in there. If, if I could is, figure it out easily. Is the sign going to be fixed to the wall? Well, I think that I think the closest the, the closest um, illustration would be O, oh, yeah. except yeah. that it's longer. Uh, you know, um, right. would, it comes further down so toward the. Gonna, this is this is the wall. It's going to come out this way. That's right. It would have a couple of brackets, and yeah. um, it would would yeah. come out two feet. And I want to be very clear. I think this is stupid. I mean, I having a sign back there allows you to use spaces that are not as accessible and promotes a walking downtown. Is there anything I mean, in the ordinance says anything about signs? <laughs> not described? Or, you know, it's it's that. Or, you've got Mr. Chairman. Bob, Bob, Bob Tien. Yeah, Mr. Stevens. 
Just kidding. Can you go on the microphone because people at home will stop me in the street and say that. If, if I'm correct, I'll, the uh, wall sign is a larger square footage than the projecting sign. Is that right? I don't it's, remember. It wall says the wall sign must not exceed 80% of the length of the tenant space. Right. For multi-use footage. Or building frontage. So I think you should just build an addition across the Who owns the alley? Put a little wall across the alley and put a wall sign on the, <laughs> on the wall across the alley. Yeah, and have a larger sign. There, there is. I would it's it's a hard to like that it's, it's, it's also I'd like it's to also ask if, yeah. if 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 the applicant is describing building a fence to cover up the propane, which you think would would be an aesthetic improvement to the area. What was the sign on the fence? That's the question. Would that fence count as a wall and could the sign is simply much to your similar design would simply be a few feet back from your entrance as opposed to a few feet in front of your entrance and affixed to the fence is that what I'm putting this out as a as a speculative you know question fill that one there Brad <laughs> I, I would have to read it there are a lot of details with signs so um, yeah I mean if you if you can think of a way um, that addresses this, we're certainly happy to receive your application. And I don't want to suggest that we're unfriendly to your project. It's just we're, we're supposed. To, oh, sorry. I, the ordinances are written in a way that we're supposed to follow if we believe they're clear. And I certainly think this could be clear. Right? Right. Is she? Can she talk to Rita directly so they can brainstorm design solutions? Yeah, I think they have an architect working on the project, so. Yes, unfortunately, he couldn't be here tonight. Oh. Um, but just just so I understand, um, if if this was a wall sign, the dimension, the uh, permissible dimensions would be different. Mm -hmm. And they would be, where? If you look. Um, Oh, I see. Wall sign. What zone are they? Right. What zone are they for the signing ordinance? Urban center zoning. Is that one, two, three, or four? Though? I think zone one. Zone one. Yeah. It's two is square feet. Right a wall sign. Which zone is it? It's zone one. Oh, okay. Two square foot per foot of building. That's right. I mean, that's a big building. But is it a stretch to say it's a wall side? I mean, we're thinking wall signs like this on the facade, right? Yeah, but this is going to be bracketed from the wall so it can stand out. Yeah, yeah and I can so have... it can be lit. Yeah. So if you own the alley, and <laughs> like an arch or something, if you own the alley and you built a portico to get into the entrance, which we are doing. Portico came across the alley. You could have a sign two feet high, the width of that portico, because that that's measured as the width of the building. The sign. So it could be quite, it could be large enough to be seen from the street. Let's put this on the list. Furniture porch. May I just show you what? Yeah. As far as the port portico or archway, how do yeah, I do? Of this? course. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I can hold one side. I don't know that you can see it, but um, can, uh, can you get up into like the Chinese royalty kind of? Can you the other side? I can hold this and you know, point. Can okay. you see that on the TV? Um, okay, so this is this is the alleyway. This is Main Street. Right. And um, the plan is to have this little arbor that covers the entrance. It doesn't, um, it doesn't touch the other the Paramount building. It, it would be uh, posts, two posts on the other end. And there would be lighting um, in, in there. So um, uh, I'm just curious what you were suggesting with regard to that. So where is it? It's here. Well, if this was solid, if this had a solid um, facade, uh, uh, sort of face oh, of the cornice, and have the, the roof, and then 
a sign to get across that face. And that could be part of the building. I think that could be true. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. So I think you, you think about it as a column, and a, mm -hmm. they call it a sort of entablature. It's so usually a couple of feet above the column and then a roof. That two feet. It does have a roof. Yeah. yeah. So you could put the sign right there going across, and it would be large enough to be seen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It moves it from vertical to horizontal. Yeah. yeah. It's a wall right. sign. Yeah. It doesn't have to be horizontal. Well, yeah. yeah. You can add the projecting sign further down the alley because you can still have, I think you have a projecting and a wall sign. As there long is, as the projecting was within the... There okay. is still an issue which we would have to think about at a future hearing if this comes back, which is that the words that this uses are building mouth and sign area. And we would have to address whether this is satisfied. I, I don't think we... It, it's not in front of us. I don't think we should uh, spend the time here necessary to suss that out. I'm just trying to flag it for you because I think that's one other really trouble area. Um, I'm not a great fan of this section, as you might have noticed. Um, it says you can read the purpose of this category sign, protect public safety, provoke, pr promote effective identification, communication, and wayfinding, and maintain and enhance an attractive visual environment that fosters a healthy economy. Yeah. I mean, if, if we say okay to this, that means that they could run into a problem when they put the sign in? Oh, uh, yeah, I think. But Brian would be the problem, wouldn't he? No. <laughs> if, the town, if the town wanted to appeal it, or if any of your butters wanted to appeal it, they would end up in environmental court, in my view, likely to lose, and then after all that, be back to square one. But I, it's just my opinion. Yeah, but they, you could draw up some plan, plans and come back. So is that is that our next step to uh, come back with perhaps the um, the horizontal sign, and um, if we wanted to have a smaller uh, mounted sign closer to the street to include that in our um, reapplication. I, we can't give you advice as to what you should do, oh. but if you have an architect, I would say, and, and you feel like you can communicate this problem to your architect and yeah. get him these pages and say, here's what they were reading when they identified this problem. Um, the, those, those are generally people better suited to give you advice than anyone on this board anyway. Yeah. But procedurally, we need to come back with a different plan. Is that correct? Like you could my my suggestion is that you ask to continue this. Yeah. You know just but could I, before we go further, what is the... Let me just answer your oh, question. It's, we're not done with discussion, so I'm not going to cut you off. Okay. I would suggest you ask to continue this and consider filing an amended application. That way we're not saying no to this. Right. Um, and... It'll give your architect a chance to put his eyes on the ordinances, consider the space and ways that maybe with some creativity everybody could be made happy. Yes. Um, I'm the new guy on the board, so I love that I have this, uh, which is the, right? This is the current zoning standards, Brian? Yeah. Isn't that on the town site too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, this is page 3-63 under special use signs. So about halfway down, it says number four, public or institutional uses. The Development Review Board may increase the maximum area of a freestanding sign for a public or institutional use. I'm curious as if the Insight Photography Project may qualify as an institution. I'm it's sure. not? I'm almost sure it's just police station, fire station. Mm -hmm. I see. So institutional doesn't refer to educational institution. Maybe the town school. I don't know. Let's check the definitions. It's not. I'm not sure. I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to. Okay. Where are the definitions? Almost all the way in the back. Um, what was the section? It's in 3119H, special use signs. 3119H. Sure about that? I don't have the definition. Well, I, I, I can get the definition. Copy. You're getting me where you are. Rounds, maybe. For, yeah. uh, 
Did you keep another copy or read this? Maybe for folks that never thought of it before, but it's still couldn't they have. Oh, yeah. Two point one nine eight. I got you. B two B four. This might need a lawyer as a chair. Need a lawyer as a chair. We operated very well. Also, I'm going on vacation next month. I see. You just have to be able to make sense. You just have to be able to read them. Nothing for public. It was just something, it was just the, the, the giving the Development Review Board the ability to increase the maximum area of a freestanding sign mm -hmm. for a public or institutional use in sign zones 1, 3, 4 to not more than 24 feet. So it was just but that's only for freestanding, is that correct? I see. We've decided that because large signs are inherently bad, that only public institutions. Sorry. Um, so um, I, I apologize. Um, I, I don't mean to make light of this. I realize it can no, slow down your project. Um, it, it's a subject of personal frustration for me that many people disagree with me on anyway. But um, the bottom line is we, we can take a vote on this if you want. Mm -hmm. We don't have to continue. You're the only one that can ask us to continue. Okay. Um, I think we are proposing that as an idea because we think it would allow the most efficient, expeditious res resolution of this issue that we've identified. Um, but you have to ask us if we would continue it, or you can ask for a vote. Um, well, may I ask for continuance then? I think that's a great idea. Uh, can we get a motion to continue? So move. Second. And just to be clear, there's no members of the public who wish to speak to this. No. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes seven to nothing. Um, if you have further questions, although you can't call us on the board, I think Brian understands the problem. And if you have questions you didn't think of here tonight and you ask them to Brian, I suspect he will help you along the road. I'm sure he will. Thank you very much. Thank you. Why don't you put that on the agenda for our <laughs> general idea once again. They're going to save the lot and sign that to allow the late summaries. Maybe new members of the planning commission will see <laughs> the problems. Just a quick question. Who, who would you consider to be in a butter? in down the alley, other than the Paramount building. For that area, you have to draw a radius, right? I mean, yeah, it would be anybody across the street, anyone in Jason. Any property. But they would have gotten, they would have known this was happening, right? It was warned. Yeah, it was warned. Yeah, but they can still appeal any time for it. Yeah, I'm just days. curious. I know no, nobody ever gets our decision and then gets mad after our meeting. Um, uh, sorry, so the next application, 2018-104, Mr. Paji and Mr. Stevens for uh, Whitman Windsor Housing Trust slash King and King. Different and 
it's going to go simultaneously up and down, as I understand. Well, that's right. I'll let you guys decide. Um, so uh, I, I just want to ask the same question we did last time. Were there people on our board who were not present for the original application here? No shame in it. I just want to understand how much context we need. Everybody was here? Yes, I was. Okay. Okay, so we remember the building. It's on Flat Street. The others had some questions about screening, yeah. noise, and height. Gentlemen, fire away. Great. So uh, Bob Stevens was associates and you know Peter Paci from the, the Housing Trust. So we are uh, back before you. Um, I, I can't remember. Well, I guess I have the findings here, but it was several months ago where we came before you with an earlier version of this design, um, and um, we've collectively been working on it ever since. Um, we're here principally for a couple of issues. There was a condition that was placed on the, um, on the permanent approval based on the height of the equipment um, on top of the roof. Um, and at the time, we didn't have specific data for you uh, because the mechanical design wasn't done. We didn't know what equipment was up there, but that condition turned out to be something that we couldn't accommodate. We actually have a problem um, with uh, the actual equipment size, can't stay within the four foot limit that was placed by the board. I think the, the condition, I understand I wasn't here, but I think the condition was placed because of concerns by neighbors, and I would like to walk you through what some of the things that we've done to try to be responsive to those concerns. Quick question. Uh, yeah. What is the equipment? Uh, they are, um, as a combination of things, so there are heat pump uh, chillers, um, several of them. And and those two are, uh, I'm looking at the rooftop uh, picture, is that the one with the two fan units on? That's. The two large ones. Those are the chillers. Those are the two, two chillers for the larger commercial areas. And then all those little ones in the back. So that is drawing. Here we go. Uh, so those, those are splits for the others? These, these are splits for every unit in the building. So there's three for common areas, and these are the splits for all of the uh, residential units. And the two big ones that you see with the fans kind of on the top, those are for the commercial areas on the ground floor, which are their splits as well. Um, so that's one piece. The elevator, um, the uh, penthouse, so the elevator rises above the roof a few feet. It's not the tallest thing up there. The tallest thing is that air hand where there's an energy recovery unit, which is, um, which is to the right of the um, elevator penthouse. Uh, and that is, I've got a, there's a, there's a section that shows a little height of that. And then, uh, and then on your far right, we, the building code, uh, it was determined requires that we have a, a, an actual staircase to the roof rather than a hatch. And so that staircase requires a roof over a penthouse, and the penthouse came up as well. That's not mechanical equipment, but that is part of the mechanical system. If you look at uh, up, oh, this first exhibit here, you can see this exhibit. Um, this gives you an overall height of all of that uh, various equipment and then the sloped roof for the penthouse for the stairs. A couple of things, one thing I didn't mention, the building is a little shorter. We were able to drop the building height about 30 inches. Um, and the equipment is a little taller than uh, four feet at seven foot four to the height of the fan flow unit. Um, after and a lot of that stuff, you have to understand they're, they're, they're split, they're chilly units, but they're also mounted on curves because you have to get them off the roof. And so the overall height is more than that. Um, so the total height is a little bit less than what it was before. But the equipment is about seven foot four above the top of the building. And if you go back to that plan, which isn't shown in the sections, we're also proposing a fence, a privacy fence around that. So there's a five foot privacy fence. So let me, let me back up. On the layout of the roof, the, uh, the buildings that are high are on the upper side of the page. So the, directly behind us is the Peter Havens, which is a one story building here. But beside that, the Alta Plana building is a three-story building, which is taller, slightly taller than this building. Um, so uh, on the back of the elevator um, penthouse, uh, all those split units are arranged, kind of collected together around the middle with a fence around it to screen that. The fence is a little higher than these units, a little lower than the top, than the top of the um, air handling unit. Um, and then you have the elevator, the two big air handlers further away, and then the front of this, not shown, is, is filled with uh, PV solar uh, panels, so that's why that's why the stuff is, is on the back side. So we have the southern end of the roof for PV, and that sort of occupies the front. So there's a lot going on on the roof. 
Why, uh, why only a fourth of friends? Five of friends. Well, why, why only five feet rather than seven? Uh, in part, I don't know if there's a particular reason. When you get on fences on a roof, you have a fair amount of wind loads and other things, but um, you can't see, you know, the way that this is laid out. If you were to stand on the roof of Peter Havens, for instance, actually you wouldn't be able to see any of this. If you, I don't know if you can see this line of sight. From the top of Altaplana, the upper floor, you're looking directly across, but again, that fence screens out almost all of that. You might see a little bit of the top of the air handling unit on one side, but it's further away. There's other stuff in front of it, and it's pretty far away. So we felt that from a visual standpoint, and even the whole roof up, you're going to look at one fence around that. You might see a little bit, you know, a foot, a foot and a half on, on the back further away. Um, and again, the sort of noisier stuff, if there are noisier stuff, is towards the front. But our mechanical engineer has indicated that all of this is sized specifically for residential areas. So the span speeds are low, the equipment is fairly quiet. Um, and in, in total, that it sort of, uh, I think, helps to mitigate those concerns that we heard. Where, where's the transformer? The transformer's on the site. So it's on the ground. That's a, that's a second question which I can go to now. Okay, no, I just misunderstood it. I don't want to. I don't want to skip This that. is all the roof stuff, other than the siding. I, I didn't talk about the siding. We, um, as the design iteration evolved, um, we, uh, in terms of managing the, the cost for this, we had a different siding on the front and on the side. The front of the building and the ten foot wraparound is a brick veneer, um, and then the back side. I think we had proposed a couple of alternates. Uh, we didn't propose the one that we chose in the end, which is a uh, a, a clapboard on the upper. Uh, floors a, uh, and the window layout changed a little bit as well on the sides. The front of the building didn't change at all. Oh, looks like. And I think another drawing in here that showed you as well if you're concerned about mechanical equipment from the street edge. This is what you see of the mechanical, a little bit of the penthouse roof for the stairs, but you can't see any of that equipment from the street anyway, okay. from the flat street. You can see it, you know, we don't show the upper floor, the buildings in the back on Elliott Street are up higher, and they, of course, look out on it, but on Platt Street, it's pretty, uh, pretty hidden. Are there other questions for uh, about, uh, Mr. Stevens about this stuff before we go to the sidewalk changes? The uh, chillers are just for the bottom floor. The chillers, I'm not sure, they're all, they're all um, heat pumps. So they're all split mini splits, and those are just larger mini splits for them. these guys. Those are larger ones, yeah. Okay, because when you said chillers, yeah, it's a chiller part of the mini split. I call it the chiller. I mean, I think okay, right. those are large units. They are, yeah, and I think it, you know because there's larger spaces on the first floor. Okay, because they just pick the bigger unit for those, and they may have to buy them. When I think of chillers, I think of a two pipe system. Yeah, so. yeah, no, it's they're all mini splits. These are okay. all car building air air mini splits. Okay. The only heating cooling. So I'm looking at so what's the name of this diagram? That first diagram? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the height including the four feet. Yes. Was sixty nine <coughs> feet, right? Correct. And that's what we approved. That's what you approved. And the new height. Is 66 and right. 10. So, so even with the um, fence and the equipment, it's it's going down. It's going down. Going down while it goes up. Going down yeah. while it goes up. That's what you always source of our criticism. Wait, how, how did you, no, you find it? How do you find extra 10 feet? Do people have lower ceilings than their mark? The floor to floor heights on the upper floors were reduced a little bit. So the first time through, we had pretty high floors. And <coughs> part of it was the depth of the structure. Yeah. We played around with some different alternatives. Would, well. would lower ceilings, in a, in a common sense, lower <coughs> ceilings? Yeah. Would that reduce the amount of air that needs to be conditioned? Um, not not, not significantly. Significant. <laughs> yeah, it's you uh, reduced the height of the building for this, though, did you? No, no. We just we reduced the height because it made sense. To do it. As, we, as we as the design evolved, the depth of structure got to be less, and uh, uh, and it was at, it was we had plenty of ceiling height even with that. So we took the building down to save money, and, and, then, right. and then the equipment height, of course, as that got worked out, went back up. 
this is the lot. <coughs> this is the lot, the biologics lot, right? That's right. Yeah. Right. So that right now is already fenced in. Is that your footprint, or is it going to go out more? It's the footprint, the width. We're taking the full width, but uh -huh. the building is pulled back from the street a little right. bit, and there's some space behind it. Right. So we don't take the full depth, but the full width of the lot. Okay. Yeah. So can you talk about the sidewalk? Yeah, so on the sidewalk, and this, and I, I apologize because in some ways there's still a little bit of movement on this. Um, we have, you have an application before you which shows, I think I'll go to that, site plan which has a sidewalk out the side. So um, since our meeting with you, we have been um, working with our neighbor, Peter Johnson in the Emerson building, who owns this property directly to the west of the proposed building to um, see if we could work out an agreement with him to have access to a side door, as well as locating a transformer for the building on his property. And, and that's what we're showing in this application are really those improvements um, for uh, the location of the changes to his property. Um, we have a later version, so effectively that, those conversations are still continuing. They're, they're almost complete, but they're not quite. Um, we're getting feedback both from Peter in terms of what he wants, from Green Mountain Power in terms of what they want. But effectively, um, we would like permission to have a generator back in the squadron on Peter Johnson's property. It looks like an underground power to serve that. Um, and then we need to get out of this door and get to a public way, which we can do through his parking lot. Or we can walk in front of his car, as he currently parks on that side, to get back to the street. And, and to some degree, we're working with Peter to see what's most acceptable to him. He's, he, he is uh, negotiating to provide an easement for us to have those things occur on his property and still would like the use of his land and not to have that interfere. Um, we came before you. I think, I, I think what I'd like to do is if, if, if this is in concept acceptable and in some ways you know, de minimis to this whole project, to give us some discretion to work with Brian, if it's acceptable to Brian as this gets worked out. Um, as I said, between those two parties, there may be, there may be a, side, you know, a sidewalk out in front. This is currently all paved from our property line to the left. It's all paved, it's currently parked. It's Peter's property, he's been using it that way for years. Uh, we probably return it paved um, so he can continue to park there. We just need to um, get through that lot. Um, he's also generously working with us about temporary staging so that the contractor can use that during construction. So uh, we were thinking that those conversations would be resolved before today, but they're not quite. They're awfully close, but they're not quite there. Is there some way to control who gets to that area to sort of void on the north side of the building once it's built? Uh, here, you're saying? North side. So the spot between these yeah. two buildings. Yeah. Yeah, at the moment, um, there could be. I mean, you could put up a fence to try to, to control site access. The Alta Plana building actually has a staircase that dumps down into that. I don't know mm -hmm. that there's a record of an easement, but they actually they actually walk off the back into that area, well. and and, and yeah. so um, they probably probably a good thing that they can get out. Um, and we have some dream about saying maybe you'd like to get in there for emergency vehicle access, but they can always cut fences and things. Um, the main if we, if we're concerned about safety and security. Um, the presence of this building, and there's an elevation here, but there are you know, multiple people now that will be living and having windows looking out into that area. So not unlike a lot of sort of urban city areas, these back courtyards will have somebody out there, you know, many hours of the day. If there's inappropriate things that happen, I, I would defer to the, the land trust will take some action, either add that fence or police it in some other way. We also, on... on a lot of our properties have security cameras in place. You know, there's not a lot of sight here to monitor yeah. outside of the building, but that is one area. Okay. Yeah. So I think we, long term, there's some discussion about trying to repurpose this parking lot into a green space, which we, we would like to see. I think in Linderwood and I think Peter Johnson would like to see that. So you mentioned a That's generator. Uh, not a generator, transformer. You said generator. Oh, did I? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we heard you say that. Okay. <laughs> that would be good. Well, I mean, but not no, it might yeah. not be good. Uh, this is, a, the, sorry, the transformer for this building. Uh, Green Mountain Power would prefer a pad on a transformer. We're sort of out of land. Um, and so the idea is that this quadrant back here is kind of least objectionable in terms of the future use of this land. It's tucked back in the corner, and yet it needs to be 10 feet away from all the buildings and still accessible from the standpoint of replacing it at some point in the future. And all so 
the the concept of putting the transformer in that back corner too, uh, we believe is best for for both lots. It really cleans up the power along Flat Street. Right now, there's uh, all sorts of overhead wires going um, through our lot, which need to get cleaned up. Uh, Peter Johnson has a pole going through uh, the center of his loading dock right now. Um, so there is there is a mess of power lines back there. This would um, allow. Uh, us to be served by underground uh, electric, uh, as well as the Emerson building to be served by underground electric. Uh, that being said, uh, we do have other options to uh, contain everything on our property, uh, but we do believe this is the ideal solution which we'd like to pursue. So, but uh, if at the end of the day we decide we can't, we do have the option to locate uh, the transformer on our property. Okay, so now is my time. How tall is the transformer? Hmm. I think it was 49 inches. I looked at the cut I sheet the other day. Yeah, yeah. Just say it's still taller yeah. than I am. Yeah, they're yeah, four, between four and five yeah, feet. By the time you mount it on the pad, it might be yeah. five feet. Yeah. Yeah, there's boxes. What, what do you envision? Um, is it possible to categorize the potential change here? Oh, I mean, what might change from this, you're saying? Yeah, is yeah. There, I, I'm sure. just trying to think of how we can work the, the condition that it's neither overly yeah. broad nor too narrow. Yeah. So one possibility, as Peter mentioned, is that the transformer will just go away. We'd still like an easement along this edge uh, that allows us to, there's, a, there's an egress requirement that is, we think, a better site plan if we can exit the side of the building and then go through his property rather than having to bring a hallway out through the front, which is a solution that we can do. So, so one option is that the transformer goes away and we still have a, a, an access out. But, but let's just say, hypothetically, we said, fine on the sidewalk, fine on the transformer. I was under the impression that you felt that there might still need to be something done administratively if yeah. something with your butter changes. That's yes. what I'm getting at. Yeah, I, and those changes are that we're showing a layout which may not be exactly correct. Mm -hmm. So the sidewalk might go through his parking or might go along our building. The transformer might be there or might not be there, but it's all associated with those, those, those two issues, the egress out of our building, the transformer, both on Peter's property. So, so if we said a sidewalk along the west side and a transformer in the north uh, east corner of the abutting property, um, with the exact final plan to be approved by the zoning administrator, yeah, that, covered. that would cover you? Yeah, yeah. Those are the only two issues of discussion that I can think of. Yep. Nope, that's it. Yeah. And like I said, we have we have options um, if. For whatever reason, Peter and us decide to, to not go through with this. We have options to do that, but like I said, we would prefer this this layout. So, okay. does anybody have further questions for the applicants? I I, I guess maybe it should have came up earlier, but I, I just trying to picture what the back of the building is, that space, yeah. and why it's not utilized for other purposes. Yeah, there's there's. Uh, well, what is the to me? It's I guess what is the empty space? How how is the empty space utilized, or why is it utilized as empty space? Well, there's a one thing that it's there for is because there's a code requirement, there's a building code requirement okay. for um, if you have windows outside of the building, yes. you can be 20 feet away from another building. Okay. So in some way, it's light and air to get into the building. If we okay. went back with the building further, um, we would either buy it. We could probably accommodate it because we can do other things on our face, but yeah. it would start to create a problem for the yes. Peter Havens building. You know, additionally, too, you know, the property line doesn't go all the way back to Peter Havens building, so there would be still be a gap back there, yes. but it would just be even more awkward where nobody could get back there. So. I see. As yeah. opposed to the Boys and Girls Club, we are tight to that because there's no windows on either building yes. on that edge. But, yeah. So that allows us to daylight those units off the back. And, to some degree, this 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 side of the building is in flux. At the moment, mm -hmm. Peter Johnson has the right to build a building right up tight to ours. Yeah. So any windows that we would have, we have to uh, plan for the possibility that those could go away. Yes. And so the daylighting requirements for the residences are front and back, and that allows a building to come tight on that side. Yes. I just I'm just trying to visualize what that space will yeah. look like at, at the end of construction. Lawn at the moment. It'll just be grass, and it'll be an area that's. Uh, now looked out on, and it'll become sort of a light and air circulation to the back of the building. Yeah. Are there any requirements in terms of instead of having a little grass patch, there are certain plants that would would be useful back there? 
No. It's it's probably going to be a pretty challenging environment yeah, to grow it's in with the light. You know, we we would yeah, yeah, just do some ground cover. I, I just I just found, I don't know what the background is. It just was very interesting when the parking garage was created and this huge hill of rubble was there, and then of course nature decided to just grow all sorts of God knows what. And so I'm just yeah, I'm just curious. And yeah. you know, you guys say it's not what do you say, it's not conducive to growth, but. Oh yeah. Who knows what sumac or whatever will grow back? There. If you don't cut it, it'll yeah. grow up the woods. Sure. Yeah. And that that space was designed to have a building put in it actually. Oh okay. Yeah, which never got built. The bush not building. Ah. Yeah. So that lot that is next to the one where you're going to build occasionally, I I've been I shop down there all the time. There's usually some kind of a bus sitting there. Yes. Yep. There is right now. Yep. Yeah. Right. Is that part of no, that's all part of the neighboring property, and Peter it is. It's, shot that's uses Peter's that. property. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we don't. That's yeah. That's the neighboring property that, um, as I say, we're in discussions with Peter Johnson about him allowing us to use it temporarily, mm -hmm. and then he would go back to using it the way he's using. So that is that the one that you, part you were talking about turning into a green space, or? Yes, I mentioned the something that actually Peter proposed several years ago and we were having a conversation okay. that would be sort of nice for the neighborhood to yeah, turn that really into nice. a green space. Yeah. And the, you know, those are long-term discussions, yeah, but yeah. We, we would support that also. Yeah. So. Okay, any further questions from the applicants? I'm going to note for the record there are no members of the public present. So on that, I would just like to say that, you know, we have been in talks with the Boys and Girls Club because we are obviously very close neighbors with them. Uh, as well as uh, with Peter Johnson, and we've reached out to the other neighbors as well. So. Okay. Um, what do you want to talk about? Exciting. Oh, oh, I thought the exciting was okay. Let me see. Well, the design review board said it was fine. We had some comments about the colors, which I think. Okay. Um, but. The DRB has to uh, approve it because the design review board, the review committee can only I mean, give our opinion. I may have read this too quickly. I thought that they that the that the design review committee was agreeable. We were. So. So what's the oh? So we're just approving. You, you're just noting that we're approving the change that the design review committee also approves. It. Recommended. Okay. We can't approve the only recommend. I get it. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. Okay. Um, so take a motion to approve application 2018-104. So moved. Uh, with with the, okay. the condition that I said earlier, which I'm going to try to repeat, that there will be a uh, sidewalk on the west side of the building and a transformer area in the northeast corner of the abutting property um, with the particular placement of each to be approved administratively. Sorry. Sorry. I jumped So move. You move. Okay. Second? Second. Any further discussion? Am I missing anything? Yeah, I think we actually have to vote. Yeah. To approve that. Is that a condition? Oh. I understood that the revised design that we're voting on incorporates this mm -hmm. suggestion. I think I think maybe I'm still misunderstanding. Do you well oh no, I'm just hold on. So oh, um, yeah. oh building materials may be Substituted in conformance with the recommendation of the design review committee. You're right. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Passes 6 1. Have a nice night. All right. Thank you very much. So we actually have to have an administrative meeting, so don't move to adjourn it. Uh, this is our annual meeting. Um, I suppose we have to have elections, right? Yep. Uh, can you remind us, besides me being the chair and you being the clerk, the other things that we need to vote? Uh, just a vice chair. Just a vice chair. Is Eric the current vice chair? Yeah. I would like to step down and I would nominate Maya. Okay. Okay. Um, 
So Eric nominates Maya. So we need to nominate a, um, a chair and a clerk. Make the nomination to continue. Yep. Okay. We get a nomination for a chair. So this leaves one one position. Nominate Brian to be clerk. Okay. Uh, now, if anybody wants to nominate anybody else, that's fine. There are no people who just vote them in as a slate. Okay, sounds good and contested. Um, I move to close the nominations and cast a single ballot on behalf of the board for those nominees. Any second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 7 0. Everybody's elected. Um, as a matter of housekeeping, now I have to miss the next meeting. I'm going to be on vacation. Uh oh. <laughs> Your <laughs> vice chairman shared this. So, yeah, you just. You <laughs> just kicked the tires. Chair, right you want to change? You just hopped right into the fire. What about a um, I can watch our video, but I, somebody else needs to conduct the meeting. And if you come here a half hour early, Brian, I'm sure I can give you yeah. a primer on what to remember and what to forget that I do. Um, so, Eric was aware of the Cruz proposal. We are going to send around an email chain, um, which I will start tonight regarding the cruise, or if you want, we can do our traditional thing and try to go to Kips tonight and I'll buy everybody a beer. Or a Coke, or a club soda, or whatever you want. I, mean, uh, I don't know if people have What, what date are you thinking about for the... The cruise is you know, generally open. I'm going to be on vacation next week, so I'm going to be up on Lake Champlain. And you're not coming. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> well then. But uh, yeah, basically, um, you know, weather permitting, um, you know, mm -hmm. most days of the week, not Friday. Um, you know, uh, basically, I just don't want to be out after dark. I don't want to be out on the river when it's uh, after we've had a deluge. Because um, I don't like getting drunk. But um, besides that, yeah. Okay. How, much, how much wood does each person need to break? Nothing. I got tons of wood. Okay. I've been quoted that I have excessive amounts of kiln dried hardwood stuff. Uh, that's for the grave stuff. <laughs> but um, now, you know, basically, about at like six o'clock is fine. Okay. Um, you know, go out for a couple hours. I'll okay. show you the new housing developments on the river. We got settled this year. So if everybody's agreeable to that, what I'll do is I'll send an email around and we'll work around Eric's schedule. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this yeah. is this is a a boat trip where we don't discuss board business. We just as long as yeah, as long as we don't discuss anything procedural or any pending applications. I think we can say things like, "Wow, James is a really bad chair," without violating <laughs> open meeting laws. But we can't. We usually uh, talk about past meetings. Yeah, we'll talk about can we talk about, about our opinions of signs? Or is that, yeah, yeah we should we should really. Can. I think we should talk about our opinions of signs. <laughs> something that needs to be discussed. Um, I'll agree with you there. As long as they weren't specific or pending signs. As long, yeah, as long as it's not the sign which was discussed tonight or any which is raised in between now and then. Um, so we can reminisce about signs of old. Do you folks want to try and schedule a common meeting with the Planning Commission to. I think we should. Because then their, their roster will be set up and you can you can make like a little limo of what we have. And I assume that they have some decisions of ours that they're not thrilled with that they want to talk to us about. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Maybe they don't, but uh, in, historically I remember that that would happen. Is this like a summit meeting or something? It's sort of like a summit. I mean, when, when you're on one board, the other board is essentially either telling you what to do or applying what you do. And either situation is frustrating. I remember being on the planning commission and thinking, what is the DRB doing with this statute? We clearly wrote it this way. And here we are on the DRB saying, you know, science stuff. Give us, you know, give us some guidelines that make some sense. Um, 
And we have, did, did, uh, does everybody know about the new planning director? Is that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so Sue's old position might be filled eventually by someone who's a little doing something a little differently. Um, for for now, that planning could job has been eliminated. Oh, okay. At some future point, there might be a something technician. I heard some, about some chaos, and that was it apparently. <laughs> well, I, I think someday, someday long in the future, you know, you know what? Never mind. The, the planning office is going to continue to operate as we've understood it to operate, but having a different person in charge and advising the planning commission may change the way the planning commission operates in ways that we can't let predict. So it's good to have that meeting, I think, with Sue just starting out. The other, there's a memo. I don't know if everybody saw it. Yeah. Um, September 10th. At five, there's going to be a walking tour of the historic districts oh, yes. with us, the planning commission, and the design review. Anything else? I just on that, I put forward the. I, I'd be willing. I have. I shoot meetings for BCTV. This is the one meeting that I'm actually in front of the camera. But if whoever wants to sign off on it, I, I was interested in perhaps bringing a, a camera along on that because I thought. Uh, something could be produced for public broadcast that might be very oh, interesting. Be yeah. So I'm willing to volunteer to to sort of be the camera guy for that if if everyone's fine with that, you know. I don't know. I know. <laughs> I mean, it's not technically a meeting, really, is it? No, we've got no. stuff like that before. I just thought the public yeah. it, it might just show up. It, yeah, it might produce up. very good. Yeah. Um, Television people would be interested to learn stuff about the historic district. Okay. Anything else? Excellent idea. Okay. Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. Seven up there. Pretty good meeting tonight, guys. That was a. Yeah. That was a meeting. Full board.